Yamaha presents The Whitetail Diaries, chronicling hunting adventures of the most plentiful and intelligent big game animal in North America. Join top whitetail hunters nationwide. Embark on the amazing adventure that is hunting the whitetail deer. Kentucky, known for its bluegrass, bourbon, and a special season to go after a buck in velvet. Kentucky is home to Salt River Outfitters, and that's where we'll find Wade and Steve Nessel for this episode. You know, hunting camps are all unique and different all across the nation. I've, I've been in big ones, I've been in little ones, and I love them all because you get to meet people that are generally very similar minded to you. George's camp, the coolest thing about it is these guys come from Michigan, Oklahoma, Louisiana, they come from New Jersey, they come from all over, but they met at this camp years ago and they all became buddies. And many of them, many, many of them have been back every year. I, mean, I know a couple of them have to miss a year here and there because the wedding anniversaries or stuff like that, but they all come back and they all know each other and they know each other by first name. And that's a unique thing you don't see in a lot of hunting camps. And, because they they love this style of hunting and you know when you get there everybody's shooting their bow uh they're grilling hamburgers they got some shrimp on the grill they've got you know live music playing that night i mean it's just a it's a cool environment it's what you wish you could see every day before opening day anywhere we went over there the night before uh opening day and and hung out with those guys a cool group, a big group. The guy does a lot in the area. He, uh, he's got a good outfit. He's got a good operation. He's got a lot of return hunters who just are just ate up with being out here in early season, uh, hunting whitetails and velvet. And I think really appreciate the way George and his crew run, run their business because it's incredible. Kentucky is, is pretty much the only state in the central part of the U.S. pretty much that has trophy, you know, trophy deer with the velvet this early. So that's kind of why everybody looks to come to Kentucky. We love outfitting here in Kentucky. There's so many deer. The, the deer per square mile population is just through the roof here. So you're always seeing a lot of deer. There's so much other things to do in the area. Uh, so all of that stuff goes, goes along with the hunting and, and the hunting really is amazing here. So now if you've always wanted a velvet buck and take on the challenge, Head over to Worldwide Trophy Adventures to book your hunt with Salt River Outfitters. Go to WorldwideTrophyAdventures.com today. All right, now we'll head back to our crew as they're setting up camp for the week. I don't know how many people it takes to figure out how to put up a six-person tent, but Jeff scratching his old beard, rubbing his eyes, Michael's reading directions, shaking heads, and if you notice, there's a pile of stuff right here on the ground right now. They're, they're, uh, they're out, obviously out of their element right now, but I'm kind of hoping they get it figured out because I'm working on food right now and that's my bed later, so I'm hoping that, that is, my bedroom is completed, but the sun is quickly setting over there. So our camp setup was, was, was really going to be pretty cool. The camera guys need a lot of stuff and we've been working with George for a couple of months on finding a location where we could be remote to be able to do what we needed to do. Um, he had two places in mind. One of them was an old abandoned farmhouse that basically we could set up right in front of. Um, didn't have any electricity, didn't have any water or anything, but it would provide a good backdrop for us. And so we brought a, a travel trailer all the way from Texas. We rolled it in, rolled out some Yamaha generators to be able to power that. You know, the camera guys would now have access to everything that they needed to be able to keep all the gear going. We would have the ability to sit in there, watch a little football if we wanted to, uh, have an air conditioning for the camera teams. But Steve and I, I mean, there's not enough room for everybody to, to, to get in there. And I like to go to bed before those guys do anyway. So we pitched 10 out in front of it, really comfortable Cabela's tents, threw some cots in there. While we were somewhat roughing it, we, we also had some pretty good creature uh, comforts out here on this one. Well, it looks like we'll have a bedroom after all. They were able to figure it out, even without reading all the directions. So it shows you just how easy it is, because if those two can figure out how to put up a tent, about anybody can do it. After the break, we'll look at the conditions the guys will be facing this week and get out into the woods when we return. Need to outfit yourself for your next camping adventure? Well, visit your local Cabela's or go online to cabelas.com. 
The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you by Yamaha's proven off-road ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Garmin Zero, leave the guesswork behind. The all-new Yamaha Wolverine X2. With a compact chassis, perfect for exploring tight technical terrain. An ultra quiet and smooth 850 class twin cylinder engine. And next level versatility with a 600 pound dumping cargo bed. No other side by side delivers this level of proven off road performance. The all new Wolverine X2 from Yamaha. As people who love the outdoors, we know what we stand for. We stand for fish, wildlife, and conserving the places they call home. We stand for the traditions we inherited and that we must pass on. We stand for great gear, fair prices, expert service, and memorable experiences. At Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, we stand together for you. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. You know, the backdrop for a, for a hunt like this is really cool. You know, you look around at the terrain in Kentucky, you got these rolling hills. Uh, where we're hunting this year, there's some bean fields down in the bottom, lots of hay fields, uh, lots of ridges, and some incredible bedding areas up on top of some of those, even down in some of the valleys. The various stands are, you know, are well thought out and placed um, all season long in the off season by George and his team to be ready for, you know, as good as you can be for wind changes and where the deer are gonna be. And you know, this time of the year, what you find so often is deer are kinda ganged up. You know, you've got bachelor groups and they don't travel to and from very far. A couple of spots we had identified were really based around trail cam picks and shooters that we, we knew were in the area. So the first night for me, there was a real tall eight. Um, still in velvet, at least last we saw them. After visiting, checking cameras, I really love this spot. All right, let's kick our Kentucky hunt off with Yamaha's Steve Nessel as he heads to his stand in the all-new Wolverine X2 side-by-side. -side. We get to drive the Wolverines directly out of camp. I wake up every morning, I look out and see the all-new Wolverine X2. Um, it's the first time I've hunted out of it, and just cool, quiet rides. And that's just the next generation of side-by-side -side, you know, that, that Yamaha's offering, and it's, it's a versatile workhorse uh, hunting vehicle, chore vehicle, recreational trail ride vehicle. It's a do-it-all machine, it really is. And uh, we took it for granted, uh, just how quiet and smooth. I mean, we had fun in it. Uh, we took it to the creek, we took it to the stands, we took checked cameras with it. We used it for what we, what we built it for. For me, the beauty of it is when it's there and you're using it and you don't think about it too much, that's when you know that it's playing a major role in what you're doing. Uh, you take it out of the equation, and you're trying to figure out how to get to some of these places in the truck, and all of a sudden, you've got a lot of stuff working against you. So the new Wolverine X2, two-seater with a dumping cargo bag. We got the four-seater from having fun in them to working with them. And, and if you mash the work and the fun up together, and you get hunting, which is kind of how I look at it. They're handy to have, but they're a heck of a lot of fun to hunt out of, too. It's uh, 3.30, the afternoon of opening day. Sorry for the whispering, but we're probably 400 yardish, 400 yards ish from our stand. We've got the Wolverine parked way, way out of sight, and we're gonna walk the rest of the way. It's hot. It's so hot, so we're trying not to sweat too much. Garmin in reach in case we need to get with Mr. Wade later. We really haven't seen much in the last few days, but we know there's deer here, so um, it's a sweet setup as you'll see once we get in. Looking forward to getting there, and. It's just, it's gorgeous in here, man. It's really, really nice. So, that's before then we're in here probably an hour, hour or two before the deer really is supposed to move. So, now it's just trying to calm down and stay quiet and wait for them to show up. I really love this spot. It was me and Jeff gonna sit back to back up in a tree, kind of a remote field off to our right, a section or a strip of woods, and then a hay field off to our, my left. And uh, it's just way up in a stand, and we had we could shoot out, out of both sides. And 
I love the way it looked. I love the opportunity for it. I love that there was a big shooter buck in the area, though he had been mostly active at night. I mean, just getting outside first night, first hunt, opening day, uh, you get excited. What are you going to see? You know, I'm going to see something, right? And so about an hour and a half, two hours into the sit, deer started showing up. The main thing about that first night was we had deer on both sides of us, and we were on total lockdown, couldn't move. I felt like we did a really good job as hunters as not getting spotted because the deer were looking at each other through the woods and all they had to do was look a little bit up. All we had to do was move a little too much and we would have been busted. You know, a few fawns, a few does, a few bucks. And still really cool to see some bucks in velvet even though we had a you know small little eight and then a nine came in later. A cool mainframe eight that'll be probably pretty nice next year if not the year after if he survives. Um, but not our shooter. But the first night was in the books. So we went back to camp, see what we had done, and, and to talk about the next day. Well, when we return, we'll see how Wade fared on his first hunt this year in Kentucky. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you by Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Conquest Sense, hunting sense and dog training sense. Stealth Cam digital scouting cameras, proven. Walkers, protect it or lose it. How do you aim a 36 yard shot with a 30 yard fixed pin at a 15 degree angle with a seven inch holdover without moving a single pin? Easy, you get one of these. Zero, the auto-ranging digital bow sight from Garmin. Many said that we were just obsessed when we started, that there had to be an easier way to smoke food. As time passed, the Bradley family created a lineup of Bradley electric smokers that has made it easier for the novice or even expert chef to get perfect results every time they use it. Grab yourself a Bradley smoker and take your cooking to an all new level. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. We're hunting in Kentucky for velvet bucks. Now this is Steve's first time in Kentucky, but Wade, well, he's been here before. Last year he encountered the perfect buck in velvet, but we'll let Wade tell the rest of the story. You know, our first night last year in Kentucky, um, climb up in the stand and we're sitting there and you know, when you're making TV shows, the TV, the camera guy has to see everything. If the camera guy doesn't see anything, you got a radio show. It didn't happen. You know, you can talk about it all you want. And I'm sitting there, bows hanging, a couple of does had come by. Man, I mean, it's just a, a very peaceful evening, nice rolling hills. And off to my, my right, I catch a glimpse of a buck coming in and here he comes and he just freezes. And I know when he's where he's at that Kevin can't seem as good as I can. I mean, I've got the perfect angle to get a shot and he can, can barely see bits and pieces and glimpses. And we try every time we hunt to get the best. We want the best shot we can. This buck, I could have shot him for 15 minutes. Kevin could not get the perfect angles through the trees or whatever. And, and I'm thinking this deer is gonna come right to left anyway, doesn't matter. The deer turns right, goes up, he's staring at me, he's on alert. That's a shot that I can make, but he's staring into my soul. I mean, he's looking into me like, yeah, make a move, buddy, and I'm gonna blow and go. And keep in mind, I've only been in the stand about an hour at this time, and I'm like, that's not, that's not the shot. You, you know, I'm eyeball to eyeball based on the terrain level with this deer. I can't move, I can't get a shot, and he just kind of ambles and walks away. You just spend the entire week that I'm here in Kentucky last year and it just kind of fades into memory. But that memory has, has continued to inspire me to look forward to the hunt that we planned for this year. And there was a lot of planning that, that went into this hunt to be able to build it to the situation where we're at now. As we start going through the scouting camera pictures, I'm like, oh, I, I like that. Oh, I like that deer. Oh, I like that deer. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I love that deer. This magnificent 10 point, I mean, wide, tall tines, mature, and he's in velvet. 
he captivated me. He drew me in. I was just in love immediately to the point that we went and, and got some more stands and threw them up in an area we thought we had a chance to get him. Will Wade go all in on this buck for the rest of the week? While we wait and see, let's learn more about the gear he used on this trip. Gear for this type of a hunt here, whether you're doing it staying at a lodge or you're doing it remotely like this, you need a lot of hunting clothes because you're gonna sweat through a lot this early season. Uh, you need to be able to prepare those clothes. Man, permethrin is a must out here. There's ticks, there's bugs, there's spiders, every kind of crawly cr critter that bites you lives here. I've, I've sprayed everything down as, as good as I could. Um, scent control, a must. Um, you gotta do everything you possibly can and then some. I mean, it's just an amazing deal. Safety, I mean, you gotta have your safety harnesses. You need to spend a lot of time practicing shooting your bow. Uh, my bow set up here is the Cabela's uh, bow and I'm shooting uh, the Garmin Zero Sight um, Instinct broadheads. That I found those broadheads fly the best for me. It's most similar to my, uh, my target points. Um, just be prepared when you go on a hunt like this with all the little details because your moment of success goes down to you know a few seconds when it comes time to that hunt you don't want to be swatting a mosquito you don't want to be worrying about scent control you want to know your bows and your arrows and your sights going to perform flawlessly and if you'll get all that dialed in before you get here the rest is just enjoyment with his gear ready, Wade makes the decision to go after the Big Ten he's seen on the scouting camera. So now we've driven the, in here with the full rain. We're going to hike around this edge. We've got the wind coming dead in our face. The deer in the scouting camera is coming from this direction here, so I think the setup in this area was phenomenal. I mean, it's Kentucky. It's velvet hunt. It's opening day. It doesn't get any better. As I looked into the weather forecast and what was ahead, Every day was a heat index of close to 100. Very challenging for the hunter, but honestly, the deer are, are used to it. They've dealt with it in July and August and, and into now. I mean, that's their way of living. They have built their patterns and, and their schedule around these conditions. We as the hunter have to adjust to that. And we all prefer to hunt when it's cooler. That's the reality. Deer hunters will talk about that all day long. But if you want a deer in velvet, buddy, you got to get in the stand when it's hot because you only have a small window basically at the end of summer to be able to pull it off. It's about 630 right now. The sun's going to set right over here. And this little spot, we've got a food source up here. And I think it's looking where the sun is, that hill over there. You know, that sun's going to get down about 730, 745 below that. We've still got it. I, I feel like a good hour, maybe an hour and a half until things start moving out this direction in that shade line. But you, you got to get in pretty early. Let everything set down. We've been sitting since just before 5 o'clock. So we haven't seen anything yet but dragonflies and a few birds flying around. But that doesn't surprise me. We're just biding time, waiting for the situation and the time of the day to get right. Those big boys get up on their feet. When we return, the sun is setting and the deer are on the move. Don't go anywhere. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you by Smith & Wesson Performance Center. Performance when it matters most. High Vis Shooting Systems. See what you've been missing. Bradley Smoker. Food smoking made easy. Protect it or lose it. 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 Protect it or lose it.
Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. Wade is set up in a tree stand in Kentucky for a velvet buck and is about to have his first encounter. You know, as a hunter, you know, opportunities present itself and you have to decide do you take it or do you don't. You have to make that determination. The very first night sitting in the stand, um, I mean, it's beautiful. You're looking up this little draw, bedding area on the right. It's, it, you know, it's, it's hot, but we're in the deer stand and, and you know, there's a doe coming in here and there's another one coming over there. And I mean, here comes this big eight point. He comes up this hill and he's posing out there and I'm looking at him. I'm thinking, man, that's a deer in velvet. That's a perfect deer. I've been here an hour. In the back of my head, there's this little voice. He's a little guy, a little deer camouflage dude on my shoulder. He goes, that's not the tent. That's not the tent. That's not the tent. I'm thinking, shut up. I can shoot him. The little dude talked me out of shooting the eight point. He did. He just he talked me out of it. And I'm thinking, okay, that's okay. You know, it's early. And you know, when you're hunting a velvet whitetail, your window of opportunity is very small. When you start looking at the scouting camera pictures, and you'll just start to see every day more and more of them become hard antlered. I mean, it's just it's a daily progression. So not only are you trying to hunt bucks in the early, early, early season that are somewhat nocturnal due to the weather conditions, you're also working against you know time because those deer are coming out of velvet so fast and you know you may have a target buck that at noon was you know in velvet and by dark he's shiny shiny antler deer ready for the ready for the battles of the rut coming up down the road so you know that's always a challenge but that's a challenge that's really motivated me to come on this hunt little guy's kind of laughing at me and goes, ha, you could have shot one in velvet right then. <laughs> and I could have, and I probably should have at that point, but I didn't. I was enamored and in love with this 10 point that I was hoping to have an encounter with as day two, day three, and day four begin to unfold. What a great first afternoon here. You know, I kind of gambled a little bit, played a hunch. We, we were checking a scouting camera and, and literally like two ridges behind the, the camp, um, a giant and then another shooter. But I mean, one giant and still in velvet. I mean, a deer that make anybody's heart pound, pound, pound. We threw up that stand this afternoon, went ahead and hunted it. Uh, you know, that's always a gamble, but sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. I've, I've seen it work so many times. We got up there, everything felt right. Wind was good for us. Um, saw a really nice eight point came in, but after seeing some of these other deer, I thought, man, first afternoon, no way. Let him go, kind of a messed, another deer, a messed up deer, a spike and a doe. I mean, it's just a good, a good hunt, a good set. You know, waited until dark, got out of there. Uh, now comes that, that thinking, what are we gonna do next? What are we gonna try tomorrow? Uh, definitely talk to George a little bit, see what Steve did. I, they ought to be coming back. I think I hear them right now. And maybe they got one. And uh, if not, we'll be strategizing for day two in Kentucky. As we wrap up the first episode of our Kentucky Velvet Hunt, while we had plenty of encounters and both Steve and Wade counted their hunts a success, stay tuned for next week's show as more encounters are bound to happen here on the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries. Viz Shooting Systems knows that your shooting performance matters in all conditions. All High Viz shooters experience faster target acquisition with our durable light wave sights. Featuring easily interchangeable light pipes, light wave sights give your eyes the exact sight picture you crave. Shoot High Viz. See what you've been missing. Ingalls got the original high performance cooler and a whole lot more.
Engel coolers. Go with the original. Introducing the Stealth NXT, the narrowest and most accurate 10-point crossbow ever. Measuring an ultra-narrow 6 inches wide, the Stealth NXT unleashes devastating speeds up to 410 feet per second, generating jaw-dropping kinetic energy and match-grade downrange accuracy, all on a whisper-quiet shot, three times quieter than the competition. The all-new Stealth NXT from 10-point. Introducing the all-new 4K camera by Stealth Cam. Proven. When I was in Special Ops, every item had a purpose, or it got left behind. It's no different today. If it doesn't protect me, or help me perform at the highest level, I've got no use for it. Otherwise, I don't come back with whatever it is I set out. To get Wiley X Ballistic Rated Eyewear. What does it take to make Evercom deer scent? It takes a deer farmer who raises whitetails. It takes mixing the special blend of Evercom, testing each batch. That smells good. And then pouring each container. Once it's cooled, each container is cleaned, examined, and packaged for shipping. It takes the finest deer herd and a great team of people to make the best hunting scent available. Evercom from Conquest Scents. Purina's Quick Drop is the perfect solution for attracting deer to your location and providing them with the essential nutrients that will encourage their growth. Use these blocks where you can and I promise you, not only are you going to see more game, but the game's going to benefit from you placing it out. 